So hello, good people of the internet. This is Tommy Kelly, and this is, of course, the Tommy Kelly Podcast. And the first thing I want you to know is that it is a lovely spring afternoon here in Ireland. It was strange because usually, you know, when it cuts into spring or, you know, seasons change, it's not really noticeable. You know, it's just another day and it's just kind of marked by a calendar rather than any kind of seasonal event. But today has been really nice and the sun has been out. That said, there's been an awful lot of slow snow here recently and it's forecast that we're going to have a snowy Easter. So perhaps the spring is only popping in to say hello before it goes back into hiding. So, um, a couple of things I want to talk about or to let you know about before we get into the podcast proper. And depending on when you listen to this, all going to plan, um, the Witch A3 limited edition print should be available for sale. It's been uh, on pre-sale for the patrons over on Patreon uh, for the last couple of days. And I was in the printers today and there's a slight bit of a hold up just because of the bank holiday weekend here and things are a bit behind. So I don't actually have them until tomorrow. And I don't want to do the, which is today is Tuesday. When, so whenever you listen to this, which I suppose if this is in months time, doesn't really matter, but it's relevant to this week. So this podcast will be on Thursday. So tomorrow, Wednesday, as I record this, I will be collecting the prints and I will make a video there and I, I will put it on general release uh, at that point. So by the time you hear this, the A3, limited edition to 40, signed and numbered, the witch from the 47th print will be available to purchase on the website. The other thing that is new and exciting this week is that the podcast itself now has its own URL. It has its own website. So if you want to go straight to the podcast from now on, rather than going to adventuresandwoo.com and searching, you know, long and hard to find podcasts on the top title banner or menu. You can just go to TommyKellyPodcast.com now and it will bring you straight to the podcast. So that's Tommy with an I-E, T-O-M-M-I-E, Kelly, podcast, all one word, no dashes, no nothing. Tommy Kelly Podcast. I put up for sale some Four Devils altar cards, art prints, signed and numbered. Um, and it was a limited edition kind of thing because people have been asking me to do it. And there's still some of those left because it didn't, you know. People put interest into it, and when it came, just weren't that interested, which is fine, totally fine. And um, so, if you want in on that, the there is the if you go to the store at adventuresmovie.com, you will be able to pick up um, a set of them. Now, the other thing I've been working on behind the scenes recently is on the forty-seven stuff. Whereas I, at the moment, there's just there's a deck, one singular deck that is kind of t- uh, they're the same size as some tarot cards, not all tarot cards, but the kind of I think they're more standardized to Magic the Gathering type cards, that game type card, because it's obviously this deck is printed by GameCrafter, and it would be more aimed towards games than Oracle decks. But I've been thinking about doing different sizes, and I want to do a bigger size for myself, but not quite all the card size, you know, because that's a bit... They're, you know, if you're going to have 40 of them, whatever, it's probably a bit too much, too big of a size to, you know, to be properly handled. Maybe. I know people have got them and really like them, and I do use the altar cards. But it's somewhere in between, between the, the 47th deck and a bigger, you know, and the altar cards, so a bigger kind of size. And this is kind of going to be a deluxe, in a sense, type version. And that's going to come in a, a different type of box, in a kind of a two-piece box, you know, where the lid has an actual lid and a bottom, and it will sit in them. And I and might have something else in it. I'm debating whether to put the four devils in or not as that. But I'm not sure yet because I really do want to keep those things separate. And as much as possible, I want to keep the kind of four devils free. Even though I do have all the cards occasionally. Which is why that's one of the reasons why the old cards of the four devils aren't up all the whole time. Because I just kind of want to let them go do their own thing. The other thing I'm looking at then as well for the 47 is to do a smaller type deck. Um, Plain card, you know, like poker card or smaller type as well for people, handy handy for people to carry around with them or for traveling with or taking one and putting in a wallet, that kind of thing. So I've been working on those two things and that will be coming up very, very soon. The other kind of new thing I'm thinking of, I'm debating about, is doing a kind of a rune set of the 47s with just their sigils. And one of the ways I'm looking into this now is doing, having 40 like kind of round discs and then the sticker on it will be the the sigil. But I'll have to see how they look Um, because it might just look tacky, it might look good. Um, But I want that, you know, that's something I think a kind of a rune set with just the sigils would be very cool and very handy. And again, good for travel and that kind of thing. So 
So they're on the horizon coming up, so keep an eye out for them. I mentioned last week also that I was going to be doing a kind of commentary or the film club thing about the film The Night Gate. And I started that and I did that. And as usual, if you've been following this podcast, you will know that things never work out for me when I come to when I go to do things. And the whole commentary was garbled when I went back to listen to the recording. Again, no sense to be made of it as I recorded something else at the same time and it was absolutely fine with the exact same settings, using the same programs, the exact same setup. So, um, yeah, that kind of set me back a bit because I was hoping that I would have that out. And now it's also, you know, when you have to repeat and do a whole thing again, it's going to be, you know, it's just harder to do. So, the one good positive spin I can put it in is that I was kind of forcing myself when I was doing it to speak constantly the whole time so that, you know, it was, there was no empty space. It was like, don't think it's a good idea for a commentary. So, when I do it again, I will be much more relaxed and have it more as if we're watching the film together than me trying to, you know, not have any empty space for the whole hour and a half, two hours or whatever it is for the film. So, yeah, so that'll be coming up soon. It's just I'm a bit behind on things at the minute. The bank holiday in, in uh, Ireland kind of uh, threw me for a bit this week just because just time and all that. But we will be back on track as soon as possible. So... Without further ado, let's get into the main body of the podcast and uh, let's get talking a bit about some of my thoughts and some of the things that have come up for me while I've been doing the journey, which is the year-long meditative shadow walking that we're doing as part of the Patreon. So let's get into that. So over on Patreon, which you can get to by going to TommyKelly.com, T-O-M-M-I-E that is, we are doing a thing every month where we take on a new team or topic and try and work through it using servidors. I'm calling it the journey. And I say we're calling it, I mean I'm calling it and people are doing it. And this month has been all about truth, telling the truth and the nature of truth. So it's been very introspective for me trying to find out things, beliefs, and thoughts and ideas about the world that I have and whether they're true or not, kind of putting them under a bit of scrutiny, a bit of the mi- microscope, and seeing what exactly is true and what are, what are the beliefs that maybe other people have said to me or other people's beliefs, and I've just kind of absorbed them without really paying too much attention and just assumed that they were my beliefs when they're not, may not be, you know, they may be society beliefs or societal beliefs or community beliefs or something that a friend said to me years ago who's who I trusted and I just kind of well that's that's right obviously now and just never really thought about it or family or school or education or any of those things and one of them that I came up with and I found it very interesting in that it seems to play in a bit to the the victim game that I play an awful lot and that I'm working on is this idea this thought or this belief in the back of my mind that it is better much better not to get the things you want than to get them. And it's for a number of reasons. It's, kind of, it's like a lot of this is going to kind of come, I assume, from my Catholic upbringing or from being the fact that Ireland is kind of a fairly Catholic country, less so than it was, but still still is. And it definitely was going up uh, when I was growing up in primary school. And you'd have religious lessons and you'd have people coming in and, you know, the teachers and anybody of certain things. I remember through uh, when we were in primary school, so like before 12, I assume I was 10, 11 or something, when we had the nurse in and talking to us about sex education. And she started going on about that. Uh, obviously, she was in her roundabout way saying that masturbation was wrong. And saying that, you know, you wouldn't rub your ear the whole time or something like that. And I was kind of going, she was a nurse and, so, and she was putting a moral judgment or a religious view onto sex education. And that's the type of thing that Ireland did and I assume that still happens and not just in Ireland that there's this moralistic viewpoint put on science in a sense you know like she came came in as a nurse not as a religious leader 
but yet her advice, her medical advice was religious in nature or at least moralistic in nature, saying that it was wrong to 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 masturbate. Basically, she didn't say that because we were all 10, 11 year olds. But just I remember saying you wouldn't rub your ear the whole time. And I just kind of ended up going, there's some very nice satisfaction that can be gained from <laughs> when you rub your ear. Oh, that whole thing. Just incidentally, there's a thing, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, if you put your finger in the air and go up and down, that sounds just like Pac-Man. Anyway, so, yeah, so that <laughs> that tangent was about the fact that um, this belief of it's better not to get what you want is probably coming from the, the, the Catholic kind of background. And what I mean by that is that, for a number of reasons, that if you do get the thing you want, that it will be terrible, it'll be bad. It's like that... Marilyn Manson thing at the end of Antichrist Superstar, or I'm not going to I'm just get this right, so I'll just paraphrase this, that when, uh, when your dreams come true, me, you know, they will all, what is that thing? I should have, uh, when your wishes are granted, many of your dreams, you know, fall apart or all your nightmares come true. But it's just kind of that idea when, you, you know, when you get what you want, it'll turn out to be terrible and you shouldn't have wanted it in the first place because it's, you know, it's, everything has turned bad. Careful what you wish for because you might get it and that'll be a terrible thing. And obviously that's not true, because I've got loads of things that I wanted, and it turned out to be awesome, and not terrible. So it's not 100% better to not get what you want. Like, I mean, I wanted to have um, a marriage, you know, like I wanted to get married, and that's been awesome, that's been truly awesome, find, you know, finding Vanessa, finding Vanessa, meeting Vanessa, and having a partner, and all that. I wanted that. I got it. Awesome. That didn't turn out terrible. That one of my wishes granted, you know, and uh, it's turned out well. So in that case, and in, in even that small example, it's, um, you know, it was definitely better to get that than not get it. Same for even looking here around me. I have my computer. I have my um, different equipment, microphones and stuff like that. And I wanted that and I've got that. And that certainly has improved my life. But yet there's still this thought of it's better to not get what you want. And I was kind of trying to dig deeper into that and what exactly does that mean and what does that encompass and what is that all about, like to not get what you want? Why is that better? And it's kind of, it seems that it's morally better for you or spiritually better for you, in a sense, to not get the things you want. Because by getting the things you want, Apart from it just being going bad or whatever, there's kind of this idea that it will make you a bad person. So it's better, I'll get into that a wee bit more in, in a moment, but so it's better to be like the strong, silent martyr, the person who puts up with it. Like we put an awful lot of praise onto people who suffer, you know, suffer without complaining. Oh, he never complained once the whole time. The volcano erupted and lava was covering all over him. You know, it was horrible, but he never complained once. You know, he was a good victim. He took it well. And, you know, it, that made him morally good, or not morally, but kind of in a religiously, spiritually, spiritually good because he suffered and didn't complain about it. So there's an element of that, not getting what you want, because it's better to not get it, to suffer and not complain about it. And... You know, we praise people all the time for putting up with shit, pain, awful conditions. Poverty, for instance, you know. Oh, but they were happy people, you know, so poor, living in neglect and horrible things. But never complained, never complained. I don't know if that's just an Irish thing, that whole thing. But there's definitely that sense of people being seen as more worthy or better people, morally better people, more upstanding, better religiously spiritually people for not complaining about their hardships and there's a whole i remember being at in um uh, it was a mass one time and it was for padre pio and this guy got up this priest guy got, got up and he was talking about padre pio or whatever and he'd known him or he'd met him once and now he was some sort of expert but his whole thing he was talking for about 20 minutes in the middle of this mass was about that god wants you to suffer and God wants that the point of existence is to suffer, but to do it gracefully, you know, to take on board all of these things and not complain and not give out about your hardships, you know, to be this martyr, to be this person, this victim, but never talk about being the victim or, you know, 
but it was important to be the victim. <laughs> that it's almost your duty, it's a noble thing for you to endure these things without complaining. And I kind of suppose that feeds into my victim mentality where I have part partly in that it's more, it has been kind of in one sense drilled into me to be more, it's more pure or more moralistic to be a victim. My only problem is that I can't shut up about it and I can't, I can't take it gracefully. I can't be the martyr. And I don't think that martyr kind of archetype thing is, this, you know, the suffering martyr type of thing is someone, you know, in the negative kind of shadow sense, you know, you have to kind of have an audience for that or what's the point? You know, it's like, what's the point of being a suffering martyr if no one knows about it? Well, I mean, because it's... But really, like, you know, like, what is... So, like, this kind of victim thing could also kind of feed in that it's the self... I could have a self-destructive thing, and this could feed into what I was talking about in the last podcast and numerous other podcasts about how things go wrong... And how things break when I decide I want to do them or things seem to be made harder. And this could be like a self-destruction thing because I have it in me that you're meant to be a victim. That it's morally pure to be or better to be a victim. That actually to win or to get what you want is in some sense wrong. Because it gets into, you know, you, you, you might feel good about yourself. And that's a sin before God. You know, pride. You know, don't ever feel good about yourself. That's not good. And like, if you get one, like, it leads, you know, it will lead you to become, in a sense, um, you will become like, you will become big headed or you'll become one of them, you know, the successful, one of them that's out there, the evildoers, you know, the others, the people in the world that are, you know, non kind of morally pure, you know, the, the way we have this kind of sense in the back of mind that anyone who's successful obviously did something wrong at some point to get where he is or she is, that they, um, there's a moralistic judgment on success that they're not good people, which is weird. There's that, but there's also the thing of the victim where I've talked about before that I'm not actually um, wanting to be faced actual consequences of what I, you know, I feel. Like, while I have the, the, the self-destruction element of it where you can go, well, I want to do this. But um, obviously, because I, 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 somewhere in me, I need to be a victim because that's right. I will self sabotage myself, whatever. But on the flip side, there's also what I said, talked before about that. If I, if I s- fail or I've made life harder, you know, to, so I can blame life rather than me not being good enough. That 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 kind of is the you know, it's not my fault that I'm not good enough. And um, this this came up very recently for me, and it was it was kind of very plainly put up for me in front of me, uh, an example of me doing this. And I spent years being in bands, and I spent playing guitar and performing and all that kind of thing. And I don't really like when you go to public places or pu- public outings or things like weddings or that or any sort of thing where the pressure is put on you to go do a song or sing or play guitar or whatever it is. And my, one of the reasons is because I don't really practice anymore. I, in fact, I don't practice at all anymore. Another reason why I don't want to do it, and this happened at my brother-in-law's wedding, and I was asked to go up on stage, and I wouldn't. And it was like, I just, I don't want to deal with it, and I don't want to do it. Under kind of felt at the time, like, it's just, no, don't, you know, I don't want to be centre of attention, or I don't want to be, you know, that kind of thing. But what really, when I thought about it, when I sat down and worked through it and all that, what, what it was is, I didn't, it wasn't that I was afraid I would go up there and make a fool of myself. What I was afraid of, afraid of, it was going up there and not being amazing. Like, going up and being okay is like, it was, it's like a failure or whatever. Because in the back of my mind, I'm really good at that. <laughs> you know, and, and like, but if I go up and I'm not, then I, there's a part of me that can't deal with that. So we'll avoid that. And avoid not wanting to do it. Now, it's not a huge big issue because it doesn't really happen that much. And I don't want to be a performer. And there is other elements of not wanting to do it. But there's definitely a factor in it of seeing myself as not wanting to see myself as not being exceptional at something. Which is, you know, your shadow coming out as well. So in that sense, it's it would be 
to, as just an example, it would be better to be a victim than to someone who have to um, show or stand up to the, the fact that maybe you're just not good enough. So there's a lot of factors going into that and a lot of different kind of contradictions and different things working and pulling against each other or whatever, where on one hand you will have the whole um, have to be a victim because that's better, morally better. And then on the other hand, you're trying to actually do something with your life and you know, you're know you kind of working against yourself. And if I have these beliefs that it is better to be a victim or it's better to not get what you want, because getting what you want will end with more pain and it will end with you being a terrible, evil person, almost to a point of that it's a sin against God or to even kind of show up and want to be better or do something with your life. It's also almost like you're trying to outshine, you know, your father in heaven or whatever, who, you know, your, your place is to be humble. And to, you know, not think too much of yourself, not, you know, not get out of your station, not, not get out of your box, just sit there and be humble and do your fucking work, you know, like, and you can see why these things, if you want to go to conspiracy kind of uh, thing, of you know, there's a lot of control in there. If you have a population believing that, you know, just don't, don't think too much of yourself. You're nothing. You're no one. And you're better to, you're here to suffer and suffer in silence. Like, so it's like, you're here to suffer don't, and I don't want to hear about it. You know, don't be talking to me about it and don't be telling anyone because no one else wants to be hearing it. So it's like, well, let's give the idea that it's heroic for you not to talk about it. And then on the other side, you have the whole thing of not wanting to succeed because you don't think you're good enough. And that's probably coming from the whole thing of a victim in a different way. And like victim rather than self-sabotaging and, and you know, deliberately trying to not be good enough um, because, you know, you don't think it's holy or whatever, whatever that actual thing is. And then the other side, you self-sabotage yourself from success because you don't want to face up to the fact that you mightn't be that good anyway. So, there's not, you know, <laughs> what do you do with all that? There's like there's a lot working against uh, and I'm sure I'm not the only person who has uh, these kind of things. I don't know how outside of a Catholic upbringing that would be, whether just general guilt and shame and stuff like that is something that's more widespread than just, you know, a, a kind of religious. So I'd, I'd like to hear from people who didn't have any sort of like Catholic or even Christian or any kind of upbringing or that kind of dogma around the whole idea of suffering and better to suffer in silence and the whole point is to you know to be holy and noble and not get out of your thing and to be successful makes you one of the bad people and all that so that, that i would definitely like to hear some some of your experiences and some ideas that you have on that for me it's just something i'm going to have to work through and, and it's certainly not true i'm aware of that uh logically and rationally but it's not as easy as that to get rid of these things because there's obviously grains of truth and all, all all of these things and i mean since it is better to just get on with life and do whatever you have to do than complain about it so i mean there's an element of the nobility of vic- being a victim it, like is you know we're all victims we all have to just get on with it so there's an element of truth in that and probably some decent wisdom to that to you know just just get on with it stop complaining all the time but on the opposite side, it, you know, you should be able to strive for success and stuff like that and not be seen as it being noble to be a failure in a sense. Whereas if you are a failure, just get on and don't talk to us about it. But yeah, and then on the other side, as I'm saying, that it's also the fear of success too, or not the fear of success, the fear of not being good enough to have the success. So, yeah. <laughs> So that was yet another episode of the Tommy Kelly podcast and I stood up for some of it, I sat down for most of it, just trying out new things. I've been doing a lot of um, research into the whole trying to be a better speaker and have, you know, um, (laughs) I was going to say not to say ums and ahs and then completely said an um and all those type of things. And I thought by now I'd probably be a bit better than I am at this, but it's something I am working on and I promise you my dear listeners, that I will at some stage become a a little less rambly and a little less scatterbrained than I am. In in this episode, I did take a lot of notes 
and I was working from that, which I usually don't. I just, if at most, I just do bullet points. And I, I found that that was quite stifling for me. And so it's probably not my best way to go. I should just just have bullet points or whatever. It, it made me not flow in the way that I wanted. And I was constantly trying to, you know, I was jumping ahead of myself. And then I'd look at a note and it was ahead or it was behind. And it was just all about my So hopefully, I was just thinking that at the end of these podcasts, all just kind of seem like an apology for the podcast that happened before. Um, but hopefully uh, it was some sort of interest in that kind of uh, my my just dis- kind of self-discovery or introspection towards one of these uh, beliefs that I had in the back of my mind. If you want to hear more nonsense like this, then you can now go to TommyKellyPodcast.com and it's bring you straight to the podcast feed. It's uh, SoundCloud, iTunes, Pocket Casts. All the Stitcher, all that. There's another one, some other new thing I added there recently, but and an RSS, RSS feed, so you can listen to whatever you want on whatever you want, and it's also on YouTube and all that. If you want to help me out and help me with uh, the blog, the YouTube's, the photography, the art, the forty servants, the magic, all of these things, then you can help me by going to Patreon and support me on Patreon. And by doing that, you will also get access to loads of rewards, and you will get access to the journey which is part of the stuff that um i which is mostly where the the whole uh, just the, or the whole main trust of the podcast came from for my work in the journey it's one of the benefits you get from joining the patreon you also can get pdfs of the books you get the digital download of the deck of the 40 servants deck loads of stuff there you can see all of them on the side of the page uh, what the different rewards are and the different level uh, tiers there so to get to that you can just go to tommykelly.com which is just t-o-m-m-i-e kelly.com I'm on Facebook in two places. You could just search Adventures in Woo Woo and that'll bring you to the Adventures in Woo Woo page, which um, I post uh, articles and videos and stuff like that that may be interested, have some sort of a cult or magic or new age or positivity or self-help type of thing to it. Some, you know, anything roughly woo woo. You can also get me on uh, Tommy Kelly Artist, which is my artist page, where I put up all my art, my photography, and all that kind of stuff there as well. So I'd appreciate it, uh, likes and that. It really would. It really helps out. If you want to find me on Instagram, Twitter, 500px of Flickr, that's Ash Tommy Kelly. Again, T O M M I E, one word, Tommy Kelly. And the websites, the adventures and woo-woo.com is the main hub of everything. Everything kind of, you know, you, you would need goes from there. You can go to the 40servants.com or 40servants.com and that'll tell you, that'll bring you straight to the, the page to, uh, and it'll tell you all about the 40 servants, how to use it, where to buy it, what it is, what it's all about. But in case of any of these things, you can find any of these things that I've just given you, any of these kind of portals from adventures and woo-woo.com because that is the main place that I, uh, you know, center everything out. And I try to, I try to post something every day. Uh, during the week and sometimes at the weekend but a couple of posts at, at least every week so good people of the internet may you learn what is true may you um not believe things that are holding you back may you search your soul and search your psyche and your subconscious and discover your thoughts and beliefs that may not be true that may be working against you and have a look at them and see them and then discard them and find something new, more empowering and something better. And may you find nobility in finding success and being the best person you can possibly be. May everything work in your favor and may you feel good about it. And once you get there, show us the rest of the world how you did it and so that we can all live like the end of a musical where everyone is happy and everything has worked out. And uh, that is my blessing for you this week. May you have a wonderful week and be well. <laughs>